So Tekken 7 Season 4 is on the horizon. We got some cool shit coming in. We got Kunimitsu coming in, new stage, new attacks for like everybody, netcode updates, Wi-Fi indicators, renewed rank system. There's a lot. There's, there's a lot coming. And it sounds really good, right? Like that sounds dope as fuck. But this morning, the morning of the 9th in Australia, which is the 8th for Americans. It's time zones are weird. So I was scrolling through Twitter, just doing what I normally do, looking for cosplay waifus and Dragon Ball tech. And all of a sudden, from the corner of my eye, I see a little tweet. A tweet from one of my favorite people in Tekken. Eris is the man, he's the man. Beautiful beard. The stuff of legends. And I see this tweet. Nemco doesn't deserve the free advertising they get from creators. Devs need to realize that the game is nothing without its players, creators, commentators, and tournaments. I think I'll wait for Tekken 8. Holy shit. Maybe they'll get a clue on how to handle rolling out content by then. And if he's not interested in all the goodies coming up, some, some shit must have gone down. So I went looking, put on my detective hat, and I went looking. And through my travels, I saw a list, a plethora of people, one by one, throwing shade at Bandai Namco for some crazy shit they did. So what happened was, apparently, Bandai Namco in Europe, they rolled out season four a little bit early, but not for us. No, no, no. No, no, no. Apparently, all the really big content creators for Tekken got early access to season four. And it's like, I get what they were trying to do because this is something that's very common in, in like the regular gaming space. And I would maybe understand it if this was a new game, but to roll out a season patch to only a select few number of people so that only they could reap the benefits. It just strikes me as weird because it's like Arrow says, um, the FGC is a very, community driven space. These games wouldn't really be anything without the ecosystem. I mean, look at Street Fighter V, that game at launch, oof. <laughs> they held on and they supported the esports scene and now they're at a point where Street Fighter V is pretty good. But that's because there were people in the community that love Street Fighter and love fighting games that were supporting it and just wanted better for the game. And then I was waiting, I was waiting. Surely Harada has seen all this controversy. He's seen all this and he's gonna make a statement because that man doesn't give a fuck what we think. I mean. He does, you know, he cares, but he's he's not afraid to call stupid for saying stupid shit, which is fair. I respect that. But here's what he said. It's a horribly nonsense operation. I don't understand the marketing sense of the European team. Nobody does. No, nobody does. Also, you should stop thinking that I'm giving some instructions to every corner of the world from one to a hundred like God. But it's like, unfortunately, Harada has kind of become the point of contact for us as a community. When something's wrong with, with Tekken, we're just like, Harada, please help us. At least just tell us what's going on. It sounds like there's a lack of communication in Bandai Namco in terms of Tekken and how to handle the release and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, hopefully they do something to make up for it because the fighting game community is a very niche market anyway, really. So you got like the niche community, then you got the content creators, then actually like zeroing in on a few content creators, you're left with this tiny little hole. Can you even see my eye? Can you see it? It's not really the way to handle it. And then Hi-Fi comes along and brings up a very interesting point. He says, instead of giving early access of new patch to influencers, Street Fighter V gave early access of Kage to everybody. And I'm like, oh sh shit, he's right. <laughs> so this isn't the ideal situation really, because Tekken 7 season four comes out what, this week? Yeah, November 10th, like two days, one day in Australia, because we live in the future. And I get it, it's like a couple of days. What does this achieve? Like giving it to these select few people, what, what does that, how does that help? What does that, what does that do? It's not like that incredibly small group of content creators is gonna be able to like go through every single character and get every single one of their moves and be like, here's everything that's come out. And I mean, season pass reviews aren't really a thing that I know of. I don't know, I just don't see the, the end goal. I don't see the game plan. I don't see the end game. I'm just hoping that the community isn't soured so much by this move that they give up on Tekken 7. Because I, I've seen a lot of people giving up on this game. Apparently the uh, Sydney Tekken WhatsApp chat has changed the name of the room to Tekken 8 waiting room. So it's like, oh man, I'm just, I'm hoping the community's not too soured by, by all this stuff because it does sound sick. Season four sounds like it's got some really cool stuff, but man, a lot of uh, ball dropping going on and not the manly going through puberty kind. So let me know what you think. What do you think about this whole situation? Do you think Bandai Namco did the right thing? Do you agree with the community backlash? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe for some more fight game goodness. And I'll see you for the next video.